Dan. Hi. Hi. How are you? Food heist. Is there a bear? There is not a bear this time. Okay. Is there an elephant? There's not an elephant either. All right. Is there any sort of creature that is not human? No. Okay. Okay. Um, But it is a food heist. It is arguably the sloppiest, most slipshod, poorly executed food heist we have ever covered. Well, that's interesting. And that's saying a lot because we once talked about three guys in a dog costume that crashed a truck through a liquor store. Yep. We've talked about a guy who filled a suitcase full of meat and walked away with it. Walked away and Mm. sold it to someone in a parking lot. Okay, so this one happened 12 years ago. Historical issues. This is a historical food heist from the uh, early aughts. Uh, This actually happened in uh, 2011, okay? Mm -hmm. So the early teens. This took place in Oklahoma. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna read you the first sentence of this article because it is criminal how bad the puns are. Oh, now you have to. Well, at first, I'm going to tell you what happened, and then okay. I'm going to ask you to guess yeah, the puns. Okay. what the puns are going to be. If they're that okay? bad, then I should be able to guess, huh? Here we go. So um, somebody broke into a Sonic drive-in okay. in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Uh-huh. And when the police got there, the dude was still inside, and then he ran. Okay. And the police were able to follow him really easily because he left a long trail of hot dogs and corn dogs on the ground behind him as he ran. Okay. Uh, yeah. And when they, when they found him, he was, uh, his hands were bleeding from having jumped out of the broken window, and uh, there was broken glass like in his shoes, embedded in the soles of his shoes. All right. So, so the question is, which genre of pun? Are, are they Sonic the Hedgehog puns, or are they hot dog puns? They're hot dog puns. Hot dog puns, okay. Because Sonic the Hedgehog puns um, are are more fun, but the hot dog fun puns are a lower hanging fruit. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say that while today a Sonic pun might fly in a yeah. small town newspaper. Mm, that's not, true. Not in 2011. Not 12 years ago. Yeah. No. Yeah. Don't, don't even try a Sanic pun. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Be ridiculous. Yeah. Did Sanic even exist 12 years ago? I don't Sanic even know what that. Sanic is. You don't what know are we talking about? Oh, well. What, what is Sanic? Is Sanic, this some internet meme thing that like meme. five people know about and you assume uh, that I know it? Dan, it was in the movie. I haven't seen the Sonic movies. It's big enough that my kids all, when we said we're going to Sonic, they're like, I hope Sanic is in it. That's insane. Because okay. Sanic is someone drawing Sonic poorly on the internet and spelling Sonic wrong. There's Sanic. Oh, okay. I, Wow. And that thing was in the movie? So what happened is actually <laughs> the movie is smarter than it has any right to be. Okay. Uh, I actually did a thing on the channel about it uh, where it's like, um, you know, it's not into the Spider-Verse, but it's smarter than it. Than okay. It. And at one point they are, Sonic has caused chaos um, as he's wont to do as a cartoon character who ends up in the, the real world. Mm-hmm. And there's a police sketch artist there. <laughs> And they're like, what do you look like? And then they hold up, is this him? And they're like, yeah. And it's Sanic. And it's Sanic. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well then. A nice little way to get a nod to, to Sanic in there. But hot dog puns, hot dog puns. Yeah. Um. So dogged pursuit. Eh? Oh, eh? that's dogged pretty good. That, that's not what they did. No. Okay. Is it It's worse than that or better? They, they managed to put three puns into uh-huh. one sentence. Did they use- Only one of them is good. Did they use like hot dog like as an exclamation? Because that would be the dumbest. Uh, no. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so. But they do start with to be frank. Oh, Frank. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. I'm. I'm. And that's I'm, the that's, that's the, the good, good one, one of the three. Okay, that's a thumbs to up. To be frank, police didn't need a dog to follow this hot trail. Okay, those are both terrible. I I warned you. Those are those those barely even count. Like, I even I wasn't even gonna read them, and mm-hmm. then you told me that I had to. But there is one good. To be frank, is a to is be a frank great. is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and here's how you know that they knew their puns were terrible. Mm-hmm. I scrolled up to see the byline of the article so that I could credit mm-hmm. them personally, and it just says by Crime Cider staff. 
nobody wanted to put their name on that opening line. Is it called? It's it's called a Tom Swifty when you do the pun in the dialogue and then you uh, do a credit to the the tag. Yeah, a Tom uh, Swifty is yeah. when the dialogue tag mm -hmm. is part of the pun. Did you know there's an entire category of Magic the Gathering Tom Swifties? I did not know that. See, because so many of the uh, so many of the cards are verbs. Okay. You can do all kinds of Tom Swifties. And so there's a famous card card named Shock, which is deals two damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can you can have, I can't believe you did two damage to me, Tom said, shocked. <laughs> That's so bad. It's great. There there's a whole one once Reddit oh went off gosh. on it and they had some great ones. So. It pains me that those exist, but mm. I'm sure I would be delighted to read them. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you. This is pretty sloppy. If you're losing hot dogs yeah. as you, as as you, you run, run away, leaving a trail for the cops to follow you, mm -hmm. you, uh, yeah. Yeah. you are an embarrassment. Like they, how many hot dogs do you even have left? He, he Obviously, he or she was not led into food heist prison. No. Not, not thrown in gen pop with yep. the rest of the normals. Yep. yep. Yeah, this is just shoddy workmanship all around. So let that be a lesson to all of our listeners that if you're going to commit a food heist, do it right. For legal purposes, that was a joke. <laughs> you ready for our brackets? Yes. Final four, our second voting. Okay. We don't know yet who has won the first. At time of recording, we yeah. don't know who won the first brackets, but now we have our... Seconds. So we have confirmed with our food heist and bad story idea experts and mm -hmm. accountants. Uh, we went went all the way to the uh, to do. We had a recount, and indeed, uh, Vikings versus Cthulhu did beat, beat Freefall Burrito World. So yes, uh, on recount, Freefall Burrito World is out. Um, and uh, I now remember us talking about maybe someday it will make a return because I, I do believe we talked about it getting knocked out. So, okay. uh, so our final four, our second, bracket, or second pair of brackets for the final four is yeah. here. The Great Maple Syrup Heist versus the Edelstahlkugel. Our number three and number two seeds battling it out. That's insane. The Great Maple Syrup Heist is the story that made me a fan of food heists to mm -hmm. begin with. And it's 3.4 million liters of syrup. Yeah, this is it's this a is big deal. Yeah. It was huge. Mm -hmm. They're actually making a movie out of it. I don't know if they still are because yeah. Hollywood is weird. Um, mm -hmm. But and then the Edelstahlkugel involves people scuba diving to the bottom of a lake with underwater torches to steal a one-ton sphere full of gin. Like if you put that in an Ocean's Eleven movie. People would call it preposterous, and yet, yes. it's true. And then on the other side, we have Vikings versus Cthulhu. The I would say you the biggest disparity between the dumbest dumbness of the idea and Dan's ability to make it sound cool <laughs> is Vikings versus Cthulhu. You the those seven minutes. When we were live at whatever convention, mm. and I threw this one at you out of my thing, and you just went, oh, well, it's this, and then had six and a half minutes, actually, of excellent pitch on how to do Vikings versus Cthulhu. I'm not surprised it's doing doing well. It's it would make well. a good shirt, and you really, really knocked that one out of the park. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the most metal of all our ideas. Yep. That could have a killer shirt. So, um, so Vikings versus Cthulhu is taking on Weekend at Vader's with an actual zombie. Weekend at Vader's with an actual zombie. Uh, immediately prior to recording this mm -hmm. episode, we had a long conversation about if that one wins, can we actually do it? And the shirt won't be very cool, but we can do it. We can do it. We just have to not infringe upon uh, yeah. the trademarks of a certain corporation that owns... And so it's a harder, <laughs> it's a harder, it's a, it's a harder one to do. Mm -hmm. We can make it work, but there you go. Yep. So uh, there you are. Those are your voting brackets to get us to our final two. What do they call the final two? Uh, the finals. Yeah, but this one, they're all alliterative. Sweet 16, oh, Elite 8, top two? Final 4. Top two? Is it top two? I hate that. 
No, it's just the championship game. It's like yeah, they don't have a different name. For I it than am that. sure because that the somewhere they have that. nerds are as hardcore as the fantasy nerds, okay. and they had just like we talked last week. How there's a name for every bit character in Star Wars, <laughs> so they could make yeah. it. They they have there's a name, a name for this. other than finals. Yeah, it's for top, the last I bet two it's teams. Top two, but it's probably yeah. top two. I, the two no. talentarian Just the championship? Two. Yeah. Mm. I'm disappointed in you, the sports nerds. Dynamic dos. <laughs> Los dos dinamicos. <laughs> Ooh, that's not bad. Yeah. Not bad. That's only for football, though. That doesn't count for, oh. for any other sport. Oh, you mean football? Football. Yes. Mm-hmm. Did you know? Did we talk about this? I think we did. Football. Soccer, the, everyone makes fun of us for soccer, but it's the Brits who came up with the term soccer and they called it that mm-hmm. until we started calling it that. Then they changed to yeah. make us look stupid. Actually, the entire history of British accents mm-hmm. are rich people talking weird until poor people start mimicking them and then they change. Yeah. Like that's where everything comes from. Uh, speaking of, of football, mm-hmm. the opening game... Mm -hmm. of the next World Cup Mm -hmm. is going to be in Mexico City. Okay. And I have already... You're going? Planned it out. I'm going to go. I just need to figure out how I can somehow make intentionally blank pay for it. (laughs) (laughs) This is is your MO for everything. Like if I promise to steal a taco while I'm down there. (laughs) Dan's going to make us content for the channel. Uh (laughs) You're going to have to get a guest host in here to talk about me being arrested in Hmm. day FA. Ben would love to do that. You get arrested. He's here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's he dreams of it. Yeah. You know, the only uh, time I've ever watched an entire game of soccer, of football, Mm -hmm. was uh, during the World Cup, whenever it was, that uh, I was living in the apartment with Micah next to, I believe, Ben. Okay. And because he made me get up and watch it, like made me as a strong term. I like came home from work because I came home at like 7 Mm -hmm. a.m. and it was on at that time. And so we sat and watched uh, the match of of America in the the World Cup. Yeah. Whatever year that was. That would have been uh, 2002. Yeah, that would have been 2002. So that's the only uh, only match of soccer I ever watched. It was the, uh, the World Cup and... Ben, as I recall, was really into it for some mm-hmm. reason. Because he lived with me. He lived with you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. and you were, I don't know if you were there. Did you come over and watch it with um, us? I may have. Mm. I don't anymore, but I used to run like fantasy brackets. Like, mm. a, um, yeah. Yeah, well, we're 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 both uh, in danger of losing our fantasy brackets because we, uh, we came <laughs> up with the seeds. So... We'll see. Cool. We'll see. So all the, I, I don't know how much betting is taking place on our bracket, folks. Oh, yes. But I have to assume there's some. Well, I mean, it's illegal in most places, so it'd be thematically appropriate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, Food Heist Prison, they're betting candy cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, did you have candy cigarettes when you were a kid? My parents never let me use candy Oh, I cigarettes. had candy cigarettes. Man, I, I can't had, believe that I, we had I, at those. At one point, like in high school, mm-hmm. got a candy cigarette. And was like, this is so cool. And you blow on it, and the little puff of like powdered yep. sugar comes out, mm-hmm. and then that's that's it. And then it's just gone. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and I was so disappointed. Like, it only puffs once. You can get a second puff out of it. There's just a much weaker puff. Mm. I had those when I was a kid, and it's shocking to me. Well, Looking and back. big league chew. I mean, big league chew makes sense. Uh, and maybe this is just their spin, but the whole point of Big League Chew as a bubble gum was they went in and replaced people doing chewing tobacco with the gum and had a whole ad campaign where like, we're getting all the sports people to chew gum instead for their health. See, but I, as a kid, only remember it as this is the candy that lets you pretend like you're chewing tobacco. Okay. Well, when I was getting it, I had that story firm in oh, mind. I was okay. like, oh, this is what you You're chew. Like, this inst- is the healthy option instead of tobacco. Okay. Um. So I don't know what, if that was a later spin they put on Big League Chew. 
um, or if it was kind of their initial pitch, but it that marketing worked on me. Okay, well, so. good to know for future reference. For future reference, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe good on you, Big League Chew. Maybe shame on, well, definitely shame on you. Definitely shame on you. For um, uh, candy cigarettes. Okay, you know what I have at mm-hmm. home in my nightstand next yep. to my bed? Candy crack pipe? I, <laughs> what no, else? Like? I have a little <laughs> teenth of uh, blue rock candy uh-huh. from Albuquerque that looks like the blue crystal meth from Breaking oh, Bad. Oh, that's really where you went? Yeah. Yeah, I, I have was it joking. At home. It's for real. I have it. It's awesome. <laughs> and I have never eaten it. I just keep it. And one time, because I have the... Candy crystal the, the, meth. I can't believe that the most outrageous <laughs> thing I could think of as a joke. Of yeah, course it's real. Of course, of course it's real. Of course. Um, no, and I have uh, an apron from mm-hmm. Los Pollos Hermanos, which was the the chicken restaurant that they yeah. used to smuggle the meth. Mm-hmm. And so one year on the cruise, I decided I'm going to dress up like, you know, Walter White, and I'm going to bring my apron. I'm going to bring my teeth of blue meth. And didn't think until I was in the airport... What am I going to do if they see this in my bag and are like, sir, we, we need to talk to you? Um, and luckily that didn't happen. I was thinking to myself, I could just eat some of it and then say, look, I'm not, I'm yep. not like foaming I'm sure at the mouth. You wouldn't have to do that. The dogs would sniff yeah, it. They would and, smell it and say, know, oh, it's just sugar. Just sugar. But yes. Weirdest thing I ever had to go through the airport with was the Hugo Award. Do you remember doing that? <laughs> no, because I had mine shipped to me. Okay. I had my Hugo Award, and for some reason, I needed to carry it back with me. Um, uh, maybe it was flying. So- anyway, and it looks kind of like a bomb. Mm-hmm. And it's a giant metal trophy that looks like it's a rocket ship, but it's also a bomb. And I'm like, um, are they going to give me troubles about this? They didn't. They're just like, whatever. So- have you ever flown with a whole ton of magic cards? Yeah, oh yeah. And Every do they time. pull you out for those? Every time. Every time. Stacks of cards look like look. very suspicious packages. Yep. When they show up on their little color code x ray thing. Yep. I've learned I have to be ready to pull out the magic cards every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I lived in Germany, um, I had the um the one of the Lord of the Rings trading card games. Okay, it was a yeah. really fantastic solo game. Mm-hmm. And so when I would go on book tours and be gone for like a week or two weeks, I would take that with me so that I could play games in the hotel room. Yeah. And uh, every single time I would get stopped and they're like, sir, what's this very suspicious looking package? And I'd pull it out and say, look, it is 400 Lord of the Rings cards. Are you a fan? But... You mentioned the the chicken restaurant, and for some reason, my mind went to uh, Casa Bonita because <laughs> it just reop or it's reopening soon. Is it? Yeah, the uh, the South Park guys bought it. Did you hear about this? I did hear about right. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it went out of business, and yep. they bought it because they loved it so much. Yes. Did Did you ever go there? Uh, I've never been to Casa Bonita. I okay. have been to the Mayan, the knockoff, which is the yeah. Utah knockoff of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was not impressed. Well, that's but the, the yeah. Mayan is where my sister met her husband. Is the Mayan still open? I don't know. Mm. Nah, like if they were gonna do a Casa Bonita knockoff, I don't know why they would also knock off the terrible food. <laughs> <laughs> because I went to the Casa Bonita, and you're like, oh wow, this food is mediocre. And then I went mm-hmm. to the Mayan. I'm like, wow. They made it worse. Yeah. Right? By having a knockoff, it's the the photocopy. Like, couldn't you have made the food actually good? Yeah. And and I'm going to say, mm-hmm. because I know there's people out there right now saying, well, of course you're not going to get good Mexican food in Utah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Moron. I will stack our Mexican food against almost anybody's. Okay? At least north of the border. Yep. Um, we have pretty good Mexican. We do. And every time I go to New York... There's this restaurant. They're like, oh, we got to take you to this restaurant. And it's a Mexican restaurant. And I'm always like, <laughs> guys, this is not very good. It's the only meal I've had in New York that is not very it's good. It's not very good. And yeah, it's like I, a high-end Mexican place. The, the I'm only sure time I have yeah. ever ordered and enjoyed Mexican food 
east of the Mississippi mm-hmm. was um, there's a taco truck in um, Pensacola. Okay, that's amazing. It's like one of the top ten taco places in the country, allegedly. Okay. And I went to try it out, and yeah, it it's, it's good. really good. Um, but speaking of me living in Germany, the worst meal I've ever had in my entire life, yeah, was at a Mexican restaurant in downtown Stuttgart. Okay. That sounds Which that is tracks. Yeah. Very much the mm-hmm. kind of thing where like someone described a burrito to the chef once and he's like, I bet I could reproduce that. It was abominable. It was illegal to have food that bad. So worst food I've ever had. Okay. Um we're at twenty minutes. <laughs> twenty one minutes. We, maybe we're just gonna we talk even about worst food. Told foods. you what our topic is yet. <laughs> maybe we maybe we'll just go on this. So um, I have a runner-up, okay. a disqualification. A disqualification for worst meal you've ever eaten. Yes, um, because I didn't eat the meal. Okay. Because this mm-hmm. was okay. in Spain, uh, which usually has pretty good food. Yeah. It's in Asturias, mm-hmm. uh, at where Celsius, the convention is. Yeah. And I was there with Tim Powers, uh, who's a super nice guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went out to dinner together, um, and... We both ordered the same thing. It was basically um, a, a chicken cutlet, like, what do you call that? The German version. It oh, was, uh, it's a schnitzel. A schnitzel, but it wasn't a schnitzel. It was thicker. And, okay. But I think they may even call, have called a it milanesa? a schnitzel. Was it called Maybe a milanesa? Because that's what it would be in Mexico. It would be in Mexico. It would be probably. But either way, we, okay. we order these things, right? We're like, oh, you know, that sounds good. We get them. Tim cuts into his. And it's raw in the center. Ooh. So they've deep fried it, but they pulled them out frozen and didn't thaw them, mm-hmm. probably, or something like that. So number one, it's obvious to us that they were frozen and not uh, freshly breaded. Or maybe they had frozen ones that they fried. Anyway. Yeah. And I cut into mine, and it's the same way. We just uh, we just left. Yeah. We just could not eat there. Now, we didn't... We didn't even ditch on them because we were given little tickets to pay for the meals. We mm-hmm. left the little tickets because we were there at the convention. So yeah. they, they got their money. But that's a disqualification, right? You, you see raw chicken. Yeah. And you just, you're like, I, I can't yeah. eat anything here. I can't eat I can't send this back. Tartar. Yeah. You actually can now, I hear. Chick- really? Chicken has got, salmonella has gotten, um, has decreased in cases so much that, that it's no longer as much a danger, I've heard. I still wouldn't do it. That's weird. But anyway, disqualification. Okay. Uh, that disqualified the worst meal I've ever had. Dave Wolverton. Mm-hmm. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, one of our mentors uh, took me on tour with him early in my career. And uh, I actually, he pitched it and then I organized it because we don't didn't trust New York to organize it. And we had all these stops around, whatever. So we drove it. Mm-hmm. Utah, do a loop up the the West Coast down through uh, Idaho, back into Utah. And at a restaurant, just, you know, we need food. We stop on the side of the road in Little Town where you gas up, and they have a diner there. And we're like, oh, little home-cooked, hometown meal, tiny little town. This is probably going to be good. Yeah. It was awful. It was, it was... We deep fry everything. You ordered mm-hmm. eggs. We're just going to deep fry the scrambled eggs for some reason. Obviously, they weren't actually, but there was enough oil in the yeah. pan to basically act like that. It was just everything we ordered was terrible. Mm. And it started, it's it's when it clicked to me that I don't think that hometown, small town food thing is a real thing. <laughs> because the meals I've had in big cities are so much better. Because, and it makes sense, the competition to keep a restaurant open, Mm -hmm. you have to be good or there has to be some external force like you're in just the perfect location. But uh, ever since then, I paid attention. The meals in small towns actually tend to be pretty bad. The meals in big (laughs) cities tend to be pretty good. They're obviously in every small town. You might be thinking, yeah, I live in a small town. We've got a, uh, I know where... The good food is there is good food. There's good food. Certainly there is. Uh yeah. all over the place. And But it's often not the place you're gonna expect. Yeah. Uh I've found that if I am in a small town like that and I order a burger, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm usually gonna get something that's really good. Yeah. Whereas anything else might be 
Awful. Little burger joints do tend to to do better, don't they? Mm-hmm. But okay, so you want to hear about my second worst meal ever? Second worst meal, yeah. This was in London, mm. which sounds unfair, right? Because everyone makes fun of British food. I actually really like British food. Yeah. Um, I've actually there's been some delicious stuff that I never had a bad meal in London. Well, I have. Mm, I want to hear I, about I it. I went there with my family. This is again mm-hmm. when we lived in Germany. Flew over to London. In hindsight, that was a bad decision. We should have trained over to London through the channel because it, it would have been way cheaper and easier. Such a nice trip. Uh, but we flew Ryanair, which was our first mistake. And Ooh. we flew to whatever dumb little airport is outside mm-hmm. of London. Anyway, yeah. we were we got there. And we went, we went downtown to do something. Mm-hmm. And it was like we had just gotten there. It was our first day. Mm-hmm. And Dawn, my wife, was so excited to get like real fish and chips. And so I'm like, okay, we'll find a good fish and chips place. Yep. And she saw one, and I know this sounds like I'm exaggerating. It was under a highway overpass. And I knew just by looking at it, like this is not one of those good dives. I love eating in dives. This Mm -hmm. was not one of those good dives. Yeah. And I'm like, no, we shouldn't go there. And she said, it says fish and chips right on the sign. I'm like, it's not gonna be good. Yeah. And we went in. And oh, it man. was, um, it was like all of the food, like you said about the chicken in Spain, was obviously just dumped out of a frozen bag and warmed up. Uh, you know, the breading wasn't crispy. The flavors, to the point that you could detect them at all, were were not good. It was so awful. And she's like, "No, this is this is." Everyone makes fun of British food. We're having an authentic British food experience. I'm like, no, please trust me. And then later in the week, we found a real fish and chips place and ate there. And her jaw just fell open. And she's like, okay, I I get it now. (laughs) You know, um, the best two meals I've ever had were both in New York. Okay. I've eaten uh, quite a number of meals in Paris and in London. And I will say I had fantastic food, both places. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is sort of what's built this sort of, the nice thing about Paris is you just pick a restaurant, you walk by, you're like, I'm going to go in there and And it'll be amazing. And it'll be amazing. Right. Whatever it is. Uh, and London, I've had generally the same experience. Granted, I don't usually go to the places under overpasses. (laughs) Usually I'm, you know, well, you're missing out. Um, and you know, London has just fantastic Chinese food in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. Uh, but my the best two meals I've had both were on Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, one was at the Lincoln Center restaurant, which was an Italian, upscale Italian restaurant. Uh, and there was just something about that meal in particular that was just full of all these different flavors. And then the second one was actually uh, Korean barbecue. Oh, um, I was with you for yeah. that meal. Mm. That's that's entered your top. That's entered my two, top. Huh? I think that's my my second favorite meal yeah. of all time because I love Korean food. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the best Korean barbecue I've ever had. And so, if you like combine those two things, then like yeah, it was really good. Um, I remember sitting there mm-hmm. and watching the realization on your face when you're like, "This food is too good." Because now I'm not going to enjoy any other Korean barbecue I go to. Yep. Unless it's this. Yep. It ruined all the other places for you. It was quite amazing. And I love Korean food. Yeah. So. It was a good place. I can't mm-hmm. remember the name of it. Uh, it yeah, I'd have Korea to look Town, it up. Uh, in it, Manhattan. It's, it's a celebrity uh, actor who started the, the, they have one in Seoul and oh, they have one in New York. That's and cool. And there's like pictures of him uh, pretending to be in fa- famous movie posters, even though he didn't star in those movies, mm-hmm. all over the walls. So I'm sure I could find it again. It was like uh, I want to say the problem is his name sounded like the name of a district in Korea, and I can't remember which district it is. So I want to call him Kongnam, but it's he's not Kongnam because yeah. Kongnam is okay. One of you know Kongnam style is oh, one of yeah. the famous districts of Seoul. His name sounded like a district of Seoul, but then it actually but it didn't wasn't. Sound like that style. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It wasn't Kongnam, but it was something like that. So, okay. So there we are. Those are my. What are your two fa- favorite meals? My two favorite meals. Yeah. Uh, one of them actually was in Paris. Okay. Probably the best meal I've ever eaten. Mm-hmm. Uh, my publicist in France took me to just some place, and mm-hmm. you know, like you said, it's just yeah. some place. Yeah. Uh, it's not a place I would ever be able to find again. Yes. 
and I just got duck and potatoes and some other stuff and was transported to another realm of deliciousness. It was just... Duck's one of my favorite foods anyway. Okay. It was it was awesome. Best soup I've ever had was random place we walked in at Paris. We're eating and we're like, what do you recommend? He's like, ah, the soup's pretty good. And so we're like, all right, we'll both get the soup to start. And it was this like bean lentil soup, which doesn't sound like it should be good. It was amazing. Just the flavors and things. And like, the, yeah, the soup's pretty good. <laughs> good recommendation. <laughs> Uh, best soup I've ever had in my entire life is pretty good. Yeah, mm-hmm. the uh, the other best meal were I to pick one mm-hmm. uh, would actually be Mexico. Uh, when I lived there on my mission, mm-hmm. um, there was a lady that made uh, food for us every day, and we would uh-huh. pay her like a monthly stipend to to feed us, and she loved doing it. And she found out she she fed another companionship as well. So there were mm-hmm. four of us that would meet every day at her house to eat, because uh, the big meal in Mexico is lunch rather than dinner. So we would eat our big thing for lunch. And she found out that three of the four of us were huge fans of chiles rellenos, which uh-huh. is probably my favorite food. Okay, in the world, were I to pick one. Um, and so she would just make the most incredible chiles rellenos and huge piles of them. And at one point, and you got to remember, we we were on a religious mission, right? And at one point, my companion, uh, Elder Gonzalez, he, he was eating this and he stopped and he closed his eyes and he said, if I were an idolater, I would make a god of the chile relleno. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember his exact tone of voice, si yo fuera idolatro, haría un dios del chile relleno. And uh, yeah. They were that good. That's how good they were. Okay. Is that they caused this man to question his faith. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever had a meal that made me, uh, yeah. Um, most disappointing. Most I, disappointing meal? Yeah. I can, I can, why I thought of this is. Okay. So I, um, when I was a teenager, there was that time where Vegas decided to momentarily clean up his image. Yeah, for like four years. For like four years, they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't be Sin City. Maybe we can be like a Disney World and be family friendly. Mm -hmm. And that marketing reached my parents and my dad's like, hey, let's go to Vegas. And we saw um, Blue Man Group and O, um, the Cirque du Soleil. They're both just fantastic. Uh, Wonderful experiences. Um, I didn't feel Vegas was very cleaned up. Uh, being there. I think it maybe it was just branding. Um, did not seem uh, particularly cleaned up. But um, when I was, um, the, my father took us to the Cheesecake Factory. Before the Cheesecake Factory, like it, it had multiple locations. Before it metastasized across the whole country. Yes. And, um, and I remember like this was kind of a bit like, I'm a teenager. I can't, afford nice food. This isn't nice food. It's Cheesecake Factory, but it was pretty good. Mm. And I'm like, wow, the Cheesecake Factory is a good restaurant. This is this is a good place to eat, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it, it kind of cemented in my head, like everything I had was just a little better than I expected it to be. And it was a good restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, so props to that chef. Years later, it's maybe, maybe, you know, what years later, I am uh, now a published author, and um, I'm with uh, going on tour, mm-hmm. and I'm doing a bunch of signings. And uh, someone asked me, this is, "I'm with Joshua," and he's like, "Where Where do you want to go to eat?" It's been an exhausting day. I'm like, I, "We walked past the Cheesecake Factory," and Joshua's a New Yorker, and you could see the little code going through his brain, where he's like, "Midwesterner doesn't understand food." I have to eat at the Cheesecake Factory. Well, crap. Um, <laughs> right? But he, he's like, all right, we'll go to the Cheesecake Factory. And I'm like, ah, I remember this being so good. It was, it's not like terrible, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like... Um, it wasn't awful food, but it didn't live up to your memory. It wasn't Applebee's, but it was Chili's, <laughs> right? Oh. Does that um, make sense? This... 
Cheesecake Factory is worse than Applebee's is one of the meanest things to no, no, say. No, no, no. no, no. Well, also w- being like, no, no. <laughs> Applebee's is the bottom barrel. It wasn't okay. as bad as Applebee's. It wasn't as bad Applebee's as Applebee's. Applebee's is just like, don't feed me Applebee's. Like, yeah, I will go hungry. Chili's is if if it's midnight and there's nowhere else to go. A uh, Chili's will usually give you good fried Chili's, chicken if yeah, nothing else. You can get a nice burger at Chili's, uh, right? It's mm-hmm. like, uh, so that's what I mean. It wasn't Applebee's. It wasn't that okay, bad. Okay, okay. But it was Chili's, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, it was... Um, it was... Oh, you Remember that episode of The Simpsons? Yeah. Where he tries to turn Moe's bar mm-hmm. into a family restaurant? Mm-hmm. And his he makes a TV commercial, and the slogan is, so if you like good food and a bunch of crazy crap all over the walls, come on down to Moe's Family Feedback. And yeah. that's what I think of every time I go to any of those kinds of restaurants. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, you're trying so hard to be weird, and the food is just Denny's TGI dressed Fridays. up. Yeah. Yep. I will say that uh, runner-up... Is uh, eating at uh, Planet Hollywood, mm. right? I've eaten at one. I've eaten mm. at a Hard Rock once, yeah. And I was like, "This is." I don't know why these are everywhere. Yeah, uh, and I think Planet Hollywood was slightly worse. Like Hard Rock, I remember being a little bit better. Both of them, it's like, why? I had the same experience at mm-hmm. In and Out because all my Californian friends just yeah. love In-N-Out. And mm-hmm. like, we got one in uh, in Utah, but I went to one in California first. I'm with a group and they're like, In-N-Out, In-N-Out. So I go and I'm like, yeah. Uh, and it's not like In-N-Out is a bad fast food burger, but it's just, a, it's a fast food burger. So our, yeah. our good friend, Howard mm-hmm. Taylor, mm-hmm. when they got, when we got the very first In-N-Out in Utah, which was mm-hmm. like, you know, 16 something years ago. Um, he wanted to try it. We were out mm-hmm. doing something, and I'm like, it's not terrible, mm-hmm. but everyone who's ever praised it is just, it's nostalgia. Yeah, they grew up eating it. Yeah. yeah. And he ate the burger, or I should say he ate about half the burger, and then he set it down and he said, this is not nostalgia. This is Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> it's a good Howard line. <laughs> Thing is, I can empathize with that because there's a burger chain in nebraska called runza Mm -hmm. that i absolutely love just just like the pinnacle of burgers to me is getting a good runza double cheeseburger and it probably isn't that good to everyone else but to me this is the burger of my childhood yeah yeah i've got one of those down Mm -hmm. in sugar house in salt lake um oh which one's yours it's we could actually called millie's actually really and it's a couple blocks from where i grew up my parents still live there uh, it was one of the places I could walk and spend my own hard-earned money from like my paper route and get a burger. We need to send somebody's for Millie, somebody for Millie for sometime. Okay, so here's the thing. We'll you turn need the, to... the podcast into a mukbang. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to make sure that they put the fries in the bottom of the bag and then all the burgers on top. Okay. Because then that like steams the fries. Okay. It's grotesque, but- okay. It's how we loved to eat them Because we can as actually children. eat yours. We can't get Runza, at no. least not, you know. Runza mm-hmm. has this weird thing they also sell, which I don't like as much, but they still taste like my childhood. They sell Eastern European meat buns with lots of cabbage. Oh, and, like a kolache? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, as like a fast food, like, you know. That's a very Midwestern thing. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll say for Disappointing Meals, actually another uh, burger that I had in Mm -hmm. Utah, uh, Smash Burger. Okay. One time when I went there, a friend of mine was the manager, Mm -hmm. and he's like, do you want to try this new black bean burger that we just brought out? It's fully Mm -hmm. vegan. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And it was incredible. It was so good. And then later, when Mary Robinette Kowal came to town, Mm-hmm. And I was like, let's go to this place. We can get burgers. You can get, because she's vegetarian, you can yep. get this black bean thing. And it's super good. I'm probably going to order it too, because it's really good. And so we both ordered one, and I was eating it and thinking, this is not nearly as good. And and I to the point that I apologized to her. And she said, yeah, I wasn't going to say anything, but this this is a pretty lackluster burger. And so I asked the whoever was running the store, mm-hmm. and they had apparently changed their recipe. 
and the really good black bean burger at Smash Burger is no longer whatever it was. It's now some other thing. Do you have a meal that you can't get anymore that you crave? Yes. Is it like made by a grandma or something, or what is it? Um, no, it's ac- I I I am separated mm-hmm. by the Atlantic Ocean from this meal. Okay. Um, in Germany, the Chinese restaurants. So you know, American yep. Chinese food is not remotely like authentic to what they eat in China, right? At least not the stuff that I typically get. Yeah, I mean, I've eaten in China. You can get yeah. some of it there. Mm-hmm. I mean, just but American Chinese food is its own genre. Yeah, it has its very own distinctive mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, German Chinese food. Yeah, is its own thing, okay. and it's very distinct and it's very different. Korean Chinese food is as well, and I miss Korean Chinese yeah. food. Yeah, um, pretty much every train station, every mall mm-hmm. has a little fast food Chinese place where you can get uh, noodles mm-hmm. with crispy duck. And what they call curry sauce, which is this uh, just kind of vaguely spicy white sauce that I have no idea if mm-hmm. it has any actual curry in it or what flavors it right. is. But it's what is standardly just known as curry soza. Mm-hmm. And that is, that's my favorite thing. Mm. Uh, when I got to go back to Germany several years after moving away, uh, that was the first thing I looked for. Before I went for the Duner kebabs, before I went for the schnitzel, I had to find... My grungy little train station Chinese food, Knusprige Ente mit Curry Sosa. And oh, I love it so much. It's one of the best things in the world. When I was a kid, we went to this restaurant that uh, was at the local mall, just a corner, kind of mid to upscale, not a chain uh, restaurant. And they had a baked mac and cheese that came in your own little. Mm-hmm. cup and kind of child sized that to this day that flavor like represents fine dining to me <laughs> uh and the restaurant's closed right mm-hmm. they closed many years ago and so i can never get that mac and cheese ever again and it probably wouldn't taste as good to me now uh but it's gone it's mythological mm-hmm. it's uh yeah that lost flavor from childhood mm-hmm. alas How's that, Ben?